All right, welcome Destiny Travelers. As you come in, go ahead and share this live. If you have not yet followed the page, Sherry Downs, you wanna do that as well. Go out, like, share, and follow the page. We're here every, every Wednesday and Friday empowering you while en route. Those of you that are walking towards your destiny, those of you that want to fulfill the assignment and the plan of God on your life, every Wednesday and Friday, we are empowering you to do just that. So we give encouragement and insight on your way to destiny. As you come in, <laughs> go ahead and let me know that you are watching by saying good morning, saying hello, letting me know where you are watching from. Today, I want to talk about why are you losing? Type in the comments. That is a question to you. Why are you losing? I want to just um, dwell on that subject. And the Holy Spirit began to um, highlight a verse to me. Uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but he began to highlight um, <laughs> Isaiah 54 and 17 talking about no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Take a moment, like the video, say good morning, share it to somebody, invite somebody on. I believe today's message is going to inspire you. It's going to edify you. And prayerfully, it gives you some insight and instruction into why you're losing, why you seem like you're losing, why it looks like you're losing, why you're not advancing, why are you not seeing any traction in your life, why you're not seeing success in your journey. Go ahead, like, share, comment, and invite. I'm going to go ahead and try to share on my page as well while we're at this juncture. Go ahead and share. Hopefully um, the stream is allowing you guys. To share successfully. Share. To your page, invite someone on. There we go. All right. So yes, today we're talking about why are you losing? Why are you losing? Why am I losing? Why does it seem that I'm not advancing? I'm not seeing any traction. I'm not seeing any battles that I engage in or that I um, come up against. Why am I not seeing the success in my life? Um, so the Holy Spirit began to um, share with me. He began to talk about Isaiah 54 and 17. And it says the New Living Translation. Let's let's pray before we do that. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your kindness, your love, your favor. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would lead us and guide us into all truth. We thank you for everyone that will watch this live and those that will watch the replay. And we just bless you, Father. It is for your mercies that we are not consumed and your faithfulness is great towards us. We thank you, Father, in all our getting, we get understanding and we bless everyone that would hear and receive this message in Jesus name. Isaiah 54 and 17. But in that day coming, but in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised up, a, up to you to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. And this is the amplified version. No weapon that is formed against you will succeed. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment you will condemn this peace, righteousness, security, and triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is their vindication from me, says the Lord. So here is the scene in Isaiah 54. God is speaking to Israel 
and Israel had been judged by God and they were sentenced to um, go into Babylon, into captivity. And the Lord is ministering to Israel and sharing with them his heart concerning them, that he would no longer allow enemies to triumph over them. He wouldn't deal with them as he did in the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah, that he was making, a, renewing his covenant with them because they were his people. So this promise of no weapon being formed against them was a promise that was given to Israel. But because we too are the children of God through adoption, we too can grab the principles of this scripture that the Lord began to speak to Israel and begin to apply it to our lives because the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we too have an inheritance in God. And there are so many scriptures within the New Testament that correlate with the Old Testament where we can cross-reference God's character and how he deals with his people. So he's um, edifying them and building them up because they have been uh, torn down. They were experiencing devastation because their enemies triumphed over them. They were held um, into captivity. They had been um, conquered by the Babylonians. But God is saying to them in this verse that, Every weapon that's formed or forged against you, it's it's not going to prosper in the thing it was sent to do. So a weapon is something prepared, any apparatus and being formed means to be molded into a form as a potter to determine, to um to make something for an intended purpose. So something when it is a weapon, it is something that is prepared. It is an apparatus. It is um, um, an action. It is something that is used in order to cause harm or conflict. When we harm in conflict. So when we think about weapons, we think about warfare, we think about battle, we think about engaging in some sort of conflict and needing to defend ourselves or defend a territory or defend a position that we take, we need weapons. So all of us have weapons. There are weapons of destruction, and then there are weapons that are used for good, weapons of defense and weapons of offense. But the Lord is telling them that no weapon, nothing that is formed against you, nothing that comes to harm you, nothing that is used to intend you harm is going to succeed in which it was prepared to do or prepared for. So every weapon that's formed and every tongue that rises against you in judgment, the scripture says you're going to condemn. You're going to condemn those accusations. You're going to disturb those words that are spoken against you. And then the Lord further tells them, this is the heritage or the inheritance that I am giving my people. And inheritance is an occupancy, an heirloom, an estate, a patrimony. This is your portion. This is what you get when you're connected to me. This is the inheritance that I will give you. This is something that you share in with somebody that is a, um, mm, a father, right? A father or a mother, a patrimony, something that is passed down to you from your forefathers. So even as Jesus Christ inherited from the father and we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ in what Jesus experiences with the father, we too in the New Testament can experience that same thing. And what the children of Israel engage in with the father we too can experience that same thing. So God is teaching the children of Israel fatherhood through his relationship with them. The weapon may form, but it may, it, and, and 
And, and here is the thing. Sometimes when we use this scripture, no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises against me in judgment shall be condemned. We look at that from the standpoint of nothing's going to touch me. And that's not always the case. The weapon may form. It also may make contact, but the Lord is edifying the children of Israel saying the thing in which it was attended intended to accomplish won't succeed it won't happen it won't be successful in why that weapon was prepared why that attack came what was the intended target what was the intention of the person that formed the weapon was it to destroy your ministry was it to destroy your um your marriage? Was it to destroy your job, your career? What was that weapon intended to do? So sometimes weapons can be formed and they can cause havoc, but they also can be used for the good. Meaning a weapon can be formed, but the enemy doesn't know the intention of God. So the Lord in his sovereignty and in his all, um, encompassing knowledge will allow the enemy to form a weapon against your career because his real intention is to get you into entrepreneurship. His real intention is to detour your life or, or have your life take a different turn. So that weapon may come to destroy or kick you out of a job, but because that weapon was formed and it came against you, it's not going to prosper in destroying your career because God allowed it so it can detour you into what God originally had for you. So we have to be spiritually intelligent to know, okay, nothing happens and passes through God's hand unless he has purpose for it. So why did this happen? Why did this come against me? When we are connected to God and when we are believers, the weapon can form, it can make contact, but God in his sovereignty and in his love will not allow any weapon to accomplish in our lives what it was intended to do. So that weapon won't succeed. So we can always be of good cheer in our inheritance because just as Jesus overcame the world, just as Jesus overcame the weapons that were thrown at him, we too can overcome the things that are thrown at us. So when we overcome like Jesus, we are an overcomer. And an overcomer is a person who overcomes something, one who succeeds in dealing with or gaining control of some problem or difficulty. Jesus told us this, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So everything that Jesus was able to overcome because we have an inheritance in God and because we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus, we too can partake of that same fellowship. We too can partake of everything that Jesus did. We can also overcome. The weapon of death was formed at Jesus, but God had intention and purpose for his death. The enemy thought the weapon of death was going to destroy the plan of God, but death was always in the plan. So sometimes when that weapon forms, because we are not spiritually intelligent and we are not connected to God, we don't know that God has plan and purpose for the things that he allows to pass, his th to pass through his hands, for the things that he allows in his sovereignty, because maybe that job was stifling the things that God wanted and intended for your life. So he allowed that weapon to pass through his hands. He allowed that weapon to hit you, to divert your journey, to take you on a different path. So we have to become spiritually aware and spiritually intelligent to know I'm not losing in this. If it came and if it hit me, there's something that God wants to do. God wants to divert my life. So let me get connected spiritually to the leadership of the Lord to see what's next, to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. The Amplified Version says this, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have perfect peace. 
in the world, you have tribulation and trouble and distress and suffering. He says this, be of good courage, be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. Why is he telling us this? Because everything that Jesus was able to do when we are connected to him and when we live in him and when we have spiritual intelligence and when we have the flow of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we have uninterrupted fellowship and we have success flowing to us from the throne of God. He says this, I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory is abiding. So when we abide in him and he in us, we can ask for whatever we will and it shall be given. We can ask for that same victory. We can ask for that same overcoming power to not be in defeat. When we accept the circumstances, when we are not connected to the vine, when we have no spiritual intelligence, when we're not positioning ourselves in prayer, it may look like we lose. It may look like there's nothing that's coming out of that weapon that was formed. And we have to understand this, that just as <clears throat> weapons are formed from the demonic realm, we too have weapons of mass destruction. The Bible says this, <clears throat> that the words out of God's mouth are quick and powerful. The Bible says this, that no word that comes out of God's mouth will go unaccomplished. Here is the thing. We have to understand that God is in charge. He created the one who creates the weapons and he sees everything and he will see to it that whatever weapons are welded in Israel's, uh, by Israel's enemies, that those weapons would be ineffective against them. Same with us. He sees everything. He hears conversations. He hears the, and he sees the heart of your enemy. He sees the enemy crafting the plan. But one thing that he will see to it when you belong to him, when you have given your life completely to God, when you have said yes to God to journey with him, to complete your assignment on earth, to be a vessel that God can use, to be joined to the army of the Lord. Any weapon that is welded by your enemies, any weapon that is welded by the demonic realm that are set up to destroy you, to harm you, to cause resistance and opposition in your life, God says, you have a promise for me, from me that those weapons will be ineffective against you. And if they come and hurt you or harm you or make contact, I have intention for them. My God. So Isaiah 55 and 11 says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish. Here it is. So that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Here is the thing. Demonic in the demonic realm, there are weapons that are formed against you. There are attacks that come against you. But in the realm of the spirit, the word of God and the prophetic word of God, the rhema word of God, the prophetic destiny that is over your life, God says, so is my word. It is just like the rain and the snow that come down from heaven and do not return to heaven without watering the earth. His words are going to make contact. His words are going to do the very thing in which he sent it. His words are going to accomplish what he sent it out to do. His words are not like those weapons that are formed against you. He says, 
those words and those accusations, those weapons that have been forged, those attacks that come against you, those are not going to prosper. But my word is so powerful. My word is, is cutting. My word is quick. My word is sharp. My word will accomplish what I sent it out to do. It will produce fruit. It will um, bring forth seed for the sower and bread for the eater. When I speak a word over you, my word is powerful. My word, which is your weapon of choice, because Paul told Timothy this. He said, Timothy, wage war with the prophecies. What does that mean? That your prophetic words are weapons. Your prophetic words are weapons of mass destruction against the enemy because those words that God gave you, they are supposed to accomplish what God's intentions were for in which they were sent. Not like the weapons of the enemy. He says, you're gonna be able to refute and cast down and disrupt the weapons of the enemy. How do I disrupt the weapons of the enemy? I use the word of God. I'll never forget it. I had this dream and in this dream, accusations, which were like bullets that were coming out of a gun um, um, from, an, uh, um, from this guy in a dream. I don't wanna give all the details of this dream. From a guy in this dream, and I wrote about it in one of my books, in my spiritual warfare book, I wrote about how the, this guy in a dream was a gangbanger and he was shooting a gun at me. But as he began to shoot the gun, the bullets were coming at me, but I began to speak the word of God and the word of God disrupted and interfered in the bullets coming at me and hitting me. Those bullets, when I begin to speak the word of God, begin to fall and they were ineffective in what they were sent to do. So this is a prime example. When someone or anything comes against us, any opposition, resistance from us advancing in the things of God, we have to be spiritually intelligent to know this. Even if a weapon makes contact, that doesn't mean that it's going to kill you. That doesn't mean that it's going to destroy you. And I mean, when you really belong to God. So you have to assess your life. Am I living my life according to God's plan? Have I done anything that allowed a, a legality in the realm of the spirit where the enemy can disrupt and come against me? Have I created wrong alignments and partnerships so that it causes the enemy to um, have a foothold in my life? Have I opened the doors of destruction on my own life? Have I come into agreement with anything which allows the enemy to oppose me or bring opposition because we are to give no place to the devil. Don't give him any room. Don't give him any place in our lives where he can set up camp and come in and destroy. So we have to know that when God gives us a prophetic word, when God gives us a rhema word, when God speaks out of his word concerning us, he, he's giving us something to uh, rest our faith on. He's giving us something to journey with, something to say, I am standing on this promise. I am standing on this rhema word, this prophetic word that came from the Lord. And out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So God is going to establish us in that word. God is going to solidify that word and make that word be established in our hearts. And we have to know this, when we belong to God, greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. So when we journey with God, when we are ones that have given ourselves over to the mission of God, we can overcome every situation. We can have spiritual intelligence to know how things are operating and why they are operating. First John chapter four and four says, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
when we begin to journey with God, we will encounter spiritual warfare. We will encounter resistance. We will encounter uh, opposition. We will encounter pain, persecution, betrayal, all of those things because they come with the world. We are in the world, but not of the world. So the world will resist us. The world will resist the things of God. So we have to become spiritually aware and spiritually intelligent to know how God operates and what God is trying to get us to. If we belong to God and a weapon comes and hits us, what is that weapon? What was its intention? What was the target? Was the weapon there to destroy me? Was the weapon there to divert me or detour me or take me uh, in another direction? Everything is in God's control. He has control of the one who um, is forging the weapon. And he has he is in control of the one that's on the receiving end of the weapon. So the promise to Israel is often applied to us as God's children, as us who are adopted within the body of Christ. Today, as we deal with spiritual enemies, we can apply this same principle. No matter what the devil devises against you, your ministry, your family, your finances, your health, your marriage, your um, uh, resources, no matter your relationships, no matter what the devil devises to throw at us, at the in the end, guys. They will fall. They will fail because God is the sovereign ruler of our destiny. We have to understand God. Everything is in his control. Yes, you may cry. Yes, you may be upset. Yes, you may have to process the things that have happened to you. But get back up. Get in the fight. Have on your spiritual armor. Have on the helmet of salvation. Have the sword of the spirit, the breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Have the belt of truth. Have the um, uh, sword of the spirit, the shield of faith. Have on the full armor of God so that you can withstand every attack of the enemy and be ready. You are ready to battle, you are ready to engage in this spiritual battle that we're in. Whether or not you engage, whether or not you fight, you're still in a battle. I, I, I recall watching this movie, and this has happened several times when I'm watching the movie, um, especially when it's a movie of boxing or it's a movie of some sort of battle that's happening. You have an opponent that doesn't want to fight and you have somebody that's trying to teach them how to fight or trying to get the fighter out of them. And so the one that is trying to teach or instruct or trying to bring something out of them has them in a ring and they're going and fighting and fighting and the one person doesn't want to fight. But here is the thing, guys, you are in the ring. You are in the battle, whether you want to fight or not. You could keep taking blows of the enemy from the enemy and from those that oppose you. And, or you could put up your dukes and engage in the battle and become one that overcomes. You're in the spiritual battle. You might as well learn how to fight. You might as well win while you're in the battle. Don't take the blows of opposition, resistance, the enemy, backlash, whatever they are and just allow that to be your portion. No, if this, I'm going to begin to be spiritually intelligent, engaged in battle. If this weapon hit me, what was its intention? What was it sent out to do? If it was to destroy my marriage, I'm going to shore up that area. I'm going to apply pressure in prayer. I'm going to begin to engage in spiritual battle. I'm going to begin to put on spiritual intelligence and know what the intention was for the weapon that was formed. If it hit my marriage, maybe its intention wasn't really my marriage. <clears throat> Maybe its intention was to destroy something greater that my marriage was supposed to produce. Remember, the, the word of the Lord's intention is just to not wet the earth. He says this when he compares his word to um, uh, um, um, just as my word comes 
just as my word comes out of my mouth, it accomplishes what it's sent out to do. Just like the rain and the snow comes down from the heavens. It's just the rain and the snow's intention is just not to, to wet the earth for us to have snow, for us to have rain. No, it is supposed to produce something. It's supposed to seep into the soil, water the plants, water the grass, provide water for the rivers, provide water for the oceans. The, the rain is supposed to do so much more. So if the um, weapon hits your marriage, what is the intention? It's not just your marriage. It's trying to destroy something greater. It's trying to stop the fruitfulness of something greater. So we have to begin to be spiritually intelligent and have divine access to the Holy Spirit to ask the right questions. Ask the right questions. Lord, what was the intention of this attack? Why am I experiencing opposition with my children? What is the intention of the enemy? How can I be spiritually mature to use my weaponry? How can I be spiritually mature to use the weapons of our warfare? Because we too have weapons. We have been given weapons in our spiritual arsenal. We have the weapon of prayer. We have the weapons of the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, meekness. Those are weapons. Forgiveness is a weapon. A weapon is anything designed to inflict harm. We too, listen, can inflict harm on the enemy by using our weapons. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, Apostle Paul tells us that we have been given tools. Guys, you got to learn how to fight against our adversary. Whether you become spiritually mature or not, he is, if you chose God's side, you are an enemy against the devil. If you chose God's side, if you became a believer, you chose a side. Now, here is the thing. You can be apathetic about your salvation and you can cause no ripples. You won't grow. You'll just be a believer that's going to heaven. You won't overcome anything. You won't have um, uh, battles that you fought and victories that you won, breaking generational curses, excelling in the things of God because I'm just a believer and I'm satisfied with just going to heaven. I don't have to excel in life. I don't have to experience the goodness of God. I don't have to see my children saved. You're losing battles because you got in this thing and you chose a side, but you're not engaging in warfare. So you're experiencing attacks. You're not checking in with the uh, higher ranking officers to know strategy. What is the strategy for winning my husband? What is the strategy for overcoming the flesh? What is the strategy? What are the blueprints of success in the kingdom of God? You're not connecting with coaches. You're not connecting with the fivefold giftings to know how did you overcome that battle? How did you overcome in your children become all believers? All of your children love the Lord. All of your, your finances are succeeding. How did you overcome? Listen, I've had to fight battles and the Lord Jesus walked me through every battle that I've come against. I wrote a battle about spiritual warfare. I had to learn how to fight just like you had, I had to learn to stop allowing the enemy to cause me to lose. I didn't understand why was I losing this? Why this word wasn't manifesting? Why the word of God wasn't working in my life? Why weren't the prophecies coming to pass? Why wasn't I getting the things of heaven released into my life? All of these prophecies that you have over your life, you are losing. You are not winning because you're not experiencing them come into reality. It's time out for the children of God and the people of God being apathetic about this spiritual warfare battle that you are in. If you do not fight, you will lose. If you do not fight, if you don't know how to pray, if you don't know how to engage with the triune God, if you don't know how to engage in spiritual warfare, you will lose. You cannot wage warfare by yourself. 
God has to send you helpers. You need destiny helpers to fulfill your destiny. You are not just a one man show. God will send you people that help you win the battle, that help you win your children, that help you win your husband, that help you win in ministry. He will send uh, destiny helpers to assist you in every area. Any, th this is what the Lord Jesus says. He says this, where you are weak, I am strong, my God. And he says this, the strong help bear the infirmities of the weak. Come on. So what is he going to do when I'm weak? In my marriage, he's going to send somebody who's strong in their marriage. He says, where you're weak, I am strong. So if he's strong when I'm weak and he sends a person who's strong, that person is a representative of the kingdom of God. That person is a representative of Jesus. He's being strong in you through that individual. And if we live this life isolated, if we live this life walking in it by ourselves, not accepting the assistance that comes through the vessels of God. We already talked about, if you've been following me and you've been tuned in, we've been talking about the family of God. He becomes strong in people he sends to help you. If you distrust people, you have trust issues, you've been broken, you will not receive the assistance of God because you won't receive it from the vessels he sends into your life. When God wants to um, um, uh, help you, he's going to send helpers. He's going to send people who have his heart. When you have been broken by leadership, <clears throat> you will distrust leaders and you will lose battles. Every person is not the, the people that broke you. Every person is not the leader that uh, um, wounded you. Every person is not like the father that hurt you, the mother that hurt you, the sister that betrayed you, the people that talk about you. You're going to have to get healed so that you can trust again. This is how the kingdom operates. When we are joined to the kingdom of God, we have fellowship with God and we have fellowship with each other. We're losing battles because we don't trust in the kingdom of God. We don't trust people to share our vision with so that they can be interceding and helping us discern what God is doing. So we have to have people that come alongside us to help us win. Type in the comments, I'm a winner. I wasn't born to lose. If you were not born to lose, you got to accept the help that God sends your way. You got to accept those, here it is, who are full of the Holy Ghost. You can't have people shaking and faking and you calling them your destiny helpers. Those are not people that you need by your side because when the weapon is formed, they're going to run. When the weapon is formed, they're going to uh, 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 get out of dodge. They're not going to be there and be a soldier with you. They're not going to fight that battle with you until it's over. They're not going to be ones that are kingdom minded that come alongside you and say, no matter what it looks like, we're going to win this thing. I believe in the grace. I believe in the kingdom of God that is within you. I'm going to fight with you in this thing. You're losing because you don't have the right people around you. You're losing because you're not accepting the assistance that God is sending you. Why? Because you're a wounded soldier. Somebody drop the ball and you're not winning because you're not divinely connected. So when you are a winner, when you are on God's side, when you have a divine perspective, when you live in the realm of the spirit, you then receive the, the intelligence and the assistance from those that have fought battles. And here it is, have overcome those that have fought battles and they come alongside 
alongside you and say, let me help you win that thing. I coach and mentor women. This is what God has called me to do. And I um, help assist in areas where God has given me spiritual intelligence to understand how to wage that warfare, to understand how to overcome in that area. And the Lord instructed me to write books of instructions concerning the battles that I face and the things that he taught me how to do engaging in those battles. And sometimes the battles that we face or come up against are battles that are generational. Nobody ever won in your family. They lost and they succumbed to that battle. Nobody ever overcame adultery. Nobody ever overcame those wounds. How do I know this? Because they never taught you. They never taught you how to overcome. They never taught you how to win. They accepted the defeat. The opposition came, the weapon formed, and it caused bitterness in their heart. They didn't understand why God allowed that weapon. And they settled and they um, settled into bitterness of heart. They settle into uh, hurt, rejection, wounds. So you're losing because nobody in your family taught you how to overcome. If everybody in your family didn't overcome in an area, so God will allow that weapon to hit you to see what you're made of. Is she a fighter or is she a runner? Is she somebody that will stand there? Is she somebody that I can send other assistance to? Is she somebody that my hand can hover over? Is she somebody that says, Lord, where I am weak, you promise to be strong. And you promise that you will send those who are spiritual to, to restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Even if it was your fault, even if you engaged in things, you need people who are strong to help bear your infirmities. You need people who are strong in the Lord so that they can come alongside you and be your assistance where you are weak. There are areas God is causing me to build things and do things. And there are areas where I'm weak in. So God has sent destiny helpers alongside me who are strong in creativity, who are strong in the gifts of help, who are strong in administration. And he has sent them to help undergird what he has called me to do and build. We're getting ready and gearing up for women of weight, 20 and 23. And he has sent people so that I'll be sufficient in the thing which I am, am engaging in battle to produce in the earth for the kingdom of God. So he sent people alongside me where I'm weak, they are strong. Even areas where I had to engage in battles and the enemy was coming against me. He sent people who were stronger in discernment. He sent people alongside me who were stronger in prayer, who were stronger in hearing God's voice and getting a prophetic message to me. Because when you're engaging in battle, you got stuff coming at you left and right. So you can't properly discern. So you need people that will come alongside you who are kingdom minded, who are full of the Holy Ghost. Type in the comments, I need Holy Ghost filled destiny helpers. You need people who are destiny helpers that will come alongside you and say, I'll fund your vision. I'll aid you in what God is doing because I am strong in finances. I have extra finances. I have uh, access to, um, uh, building businesses. I have access to things. I understand things greater than you. So I'm going to come alongside you and where I am strong and where you are weak, we're going to link up and we're going to win this thing together. I'm not going to lose. You're not going to lose your child. You're not going to lose your resources. You're not going to lose your marriage because I am strong in that area because God has given me an authority in that area. I have overcome in that area and I know just what to do to help you win. And it's like this. If I'm carrying a pistol and I don't have the proper gun to wage war with, to fight this battle with, but somebody who has an authority in marriage, somebody who has an authority in a greater area, they may have a machine gun and they come alongside me and all they do is spray. Brrr, 
whatever. And the battle is won. Why? Because they have stronger weaponry. They have stronger weight in the spirit. They are more skilled than I am. So the Lord will put people in your path. He'll put destiny helpers in your, in your way to help. Here it is. Help to walk you to wholeness. God doesn't want you weak. God doesn't want you in the battle and you just losing. He wants you to walk out the abundant life that Jesus died for you to have. Jesus' death was gruesome. Y'all hear me. It was a gruesome death. It was a horrible death. He wasn't just dying that death. So you can be a believer that's still defeated. My God. Type in the comments, I don't have to be defeated because Jesus died. He said, I overcame the world. I overcame all of that so that you can experience prosperity, so that you can experience the goodness of God, so that you can experience the fellowship of the saints. When you don't have saints around you, I will send helpers. I will send people who are strong to help hold you up. I will bring you out of darkness. I will bring you out of religion. I will bring you out of pain. I will bring you out of trauma. And how does he do this? He sends people that will love on you. He sends people who are not toxic. He sends people that have the capacity to walk with you through your trauma. He sends people with patience that are patient with you even when you reject them. Even when you say things out of your trauma, out of your pain, he sends people who are patient and gentle that will uh, walk you to wholeness. So every weapon he has given us, he has given us tools to fight the enemy. He has given us weapons of mass destruction. He has given us weapons of warfare that are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Here it is. You are your greatest enemy. My God. Type in the comments. I'm my greatest enemy. When you overcome you, when you conquer you, when you are able to subdue you, when you are able to tell you no, when you are able to tell you to shut up, when you are able to tell you don't eat that, when you are able to tell you to write that book, when you are able to tell you to not go that way, not connect with those people, you have conquered the greatest enemy because what the enemy likes to do he likes to set up camp in our minds he likes to uh, um bring contrary thoughts he likes to bring thoughts that are against the knowledge of god he likes to bring thoughts into our lives that cause us to engage in things that are detrimental to our destiny but here is the the culmination of it all the lord will protect and uphold his children. If you belong to God, if you are walking closely with God, he will be faithful. He'll be faithful to send helpers. He'll be faithful to send resources. He'll be faithful to send uh, uh, the everything that you need. He will be faithful to send it because the Lord will protect and uphold his children. If you belong to him, type in the comments, I belong to God. No matter what you face, he will help you through it until the final victory. Isaiah 41 and 10. So God wants you to have victory in your life. God wants you to experience overflow. God wants you to exceed and thrive in him. God wants you to not live in fear. He wants you to be relaxed. He doesn't want you to be tormented. He doesn't want you to be worried or anxious. He says, I am with you. Take that in your spirit. Type, God is with me. I belong to him. I am a daughter or son of the most high God. And he is with me. We don't have to fear. We don't have to be in torment. We don't have to be in worry. We don't have to be in anxiety because he is with us. Do not be dismayed. Do not be confused. Do not be discouraged. Do not be let down because he is your God. 
You belong to God and he is with you. And if you believe that he is the God that the scriptures talk about, the Bible says this, Jesus said this, when he was talking to the woman with at the well, he says, if you believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of your belly, out of your innermost being, out of your heart is gonna flow rivers of revelation, rivers of living water, rivers of refreshing. And it's not just going to be for you. It's going to pour out on those. So when you know God, you can do great and mighty exploits. Why? Because every situation you get in, you're going to know what God is doing. You're going to know God's character. The enemy tries to disrupt our flow of fellowship because he tries to tell us God's character is not good. He tries to tell us that God's intention is not this. When we become spiritually connected to God, when we spend time in the word, when we spend time in prayer, when we spend time in fellowship with other believers, we are going to be strong in our, in our God under in, in our understanding of God's character and we will be strengthened and he will help us. He says, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God says, I'm going to uphold you with my righteous right hand. Here it is. When God said, when God came down to help the children of Israel, he says, I heard the cry of my people. When the children of Israel went into captivity into Egypt, he says, and God came down. So if God was the one that came down, why did he send Moses? When God has intention for something, when God wants to come into something, hover over something, what he does is he sends his people that will hear his voice and go to that area that needs assistance. God said, I'm coming down. But what he did was he talked to Moses. He sent Moses. So when God wants to invade your life, when God wants to come and help you, what is he going to do? He's coming himself, but he's sending people that will hear his voice and accomplish the task in which he sent them. When God steps in, when God says, I'm coming to your house, he's sending people. When God says, I'm going to heal you, he's sending people people. He's sending people to be his representatives that will accomplish the task in which he sent them. The same thing with his word. He says, my word will not go out void. It's going to accomplish. That word is going to get into the hearts of those that will hear the Lord and those that will go uh, with that individual, those that will help that individual through that situation, those that will help that individual get to God's intended purpose. So we're losing because we're not spiritually intelligent. We're not connecting with God in prayer. We're not connected to those who can assist us. We are wounded because of our experiences. You got to bring your heart to God for complete healing. So you are not operating as a loser. Type in the comments. I'm not a loser. I am a winner. I was born to win. I was ordained to win. So God will send you the help that you need. Make sure your heart is healed. Make sure you don't have trust issues because if you have trust issues, God's not going to waste his time in sending people. If you're not working that stuff out of your heart, how your mother treated you, your father treated you, your sisters treated you, your cousins treated you, your boss treated you, your friend treated you. If you're not getting all of those betrayals out of you and you're holding on to that wound and you're covering up that wound and you're making inner vows saying, I'll never let somebody this close to me again. I'll never let a friend do this again. If you're not willing to trust people, you can't trust God. Because when God is coming to your life, when God sends resources, he will send people. When God wants to bring money into your life, he's going to send people to give it. <laughs> yeah, he can send checks in the mail, but what does he want to do? Restore the fellowship of the brethren. Because somebody that claimed to be the brethren broke 
that fellowship. So he wants to heal you so that you can have a flow of fellowship with the brethren. It's not just God that we have fellowship with. We have fellowship with the triune God and we have fellowship with each other. So those inner vows that you've made, I'll never do this again. I'll never experience that. You're, you're literally saying I'm protecting myself and God, I don't trust you. I know because I had to walk through that. I had to ask God to heal me and I had to open my heart back up to trust people again. When you have been hurt by people, you have to trust God and trust him to send the right people and, and then learn the lesson. Learn to pay attention to your discernment. Learn and ask God questions. Don't um, uh, operate outside of wisdom, right? Learn how to take people in doses. So, so we have to become spiritually intelligent so we're not losing. So our hearts are not wounded and we're not walking around with years of baggage. And we're experiencing the low level um, gospel, the gospel of God. He says, I come, Jesus said this, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. He wants you to experience a full, enjoyable, relaxing life. This is, this was God's full intention when he created man, that he wanted us to experience a life of fullness, a life of joy, a life well-traveled, a life where we had resources, everything that we needed came to us easily and effortlessly. That was his intention. But because sin came into the picture, we experienced toil. Things came to us with hard work. So we need to get back restored in right relationship with God so that God can bring the right relationships to us. When we open our heart to God and ask him to come in and heal it, he's going to send people to test that healing. This is spiritual intelligence. This is me having to walk through things. The test, if you're healed, how do you respond to people he sends? How do you respond to people? Are you self-protecting? Then you don't trust God and you don't trust people again. You cannot have fellowship with God and not have fellowship with the brethren. That's a healed heart that you're able to trust people again, because if I can't trust people, God can't get things to me because it's through connectivity and connections that God lifts us, that God gives us revelation, that we journey well, that we trust those that are prophets to speak into our lives. We need the body of Christ. We need the body of Christ to win. We need each other. We were not born in, as an isolated island. You have to let people come in and speak into your life. You have to share things with people. I'm not saying you're sharing with everybody. You may have one or two Holy Spirit filled. Jesus, he had 12 disciples. He had 72 that he sent out. He had 12 close ones and he had three in an inner circle that got to see greater dimensions of his personhood and his de divinity. So we got to learn and I, I'm... I'm um, getting ready to publish my newest book called The Woman of Weight. And in that book, I talk about relational intelligence, being people smart. When you are people smart, you know how to operate in the kingdom of God. You know, and these are things that you have to also be told as a child. But sometimes because it wasn't taught, it can't be given. Sometimes you got to understand this. People cannot give you what they do not have. And you are the one because you recognize it and you understand it. You are the one that's supposed to break the chain. You're supposed to break the chain of that ignorance. You're supposed to break the chain of handling people poorly. You're supposed to break the chain of how you talk to individuals. And it may take God really coming in and it may take people coming alongside you to teach you that and help you in that journey. Break the chain of how you respond to people how you handle people, how you deal with people, how you deal with your children, how you deal with your spouse, how you deal with your finances is going to take God to send people to help teach you those things. So you're losing because of all of those things.
When you begin to be spiritually intelligent and take God by the hand, he'll begin to walk you into a place of wholeness. He'll bring relationships that are destiny helpers and relationships that will help you journey well to fulfill your assignment and travel well. Be encouraged, be edified. If you have not yet registered for Women of Weight 20 and 23, go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com and register today. We have two more weeks, two more weeks. Yeah, wait, one, one more week after this week. And then we're in conference. You still have time to register. Virtual seats are available, www.touchdowns.com enterprise.com. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with my love. If you are interested in one-on-one coaching, if you are interested in group coaching, you can go to my website and find that as well. If you are interested in reading any of my books, which are instructions that the Lord had given me during my season that he has um, mandated me to share with the body of Christ, you can go to my website and find those as well in the shop tab on my website. I love you. Have a wonderful day. Father, I thank you. And I pray that this message is received in which it was given in love. And I pray that the hearers be edified and motivated and inspired by the Holy Spirit to win every battle and understand spiritually what each weapon was intended to do and why it was formed and what their posture and position is and how they are to respond in Jesus name. Amen. Have a wonderful day.